Anna here. Or maybe better. Hello allemaal, Anna here. Because today I am going to take a look at a game that is going to represent my home country of the Netherlands or Holland where I am from. This game is going to be Shadows Amsterdam. And even though it says Amsterdam, there are going to be many different images that are also going to depict the beautiful landscape of the Netherlands. And in this detective game, you are going to try with your team to be the first uh, to solve a crime. I'm first going to show you how the game is going to work and then I'm going to tell you if I had any fun in this Dutch inspired game. In Shadows Amsterdam, your goal is to be to be the first team to gather three pieces of evidence and then bring that to their client. If you do this two times, so through two rounds, you're going to be the winner of the game. Your team can also lose a round by by stepping on three locations where the police is watching you and if this happens the other team is going to win that round so if you do that two times the other team is going to be the winner of the game every team is going to have one informant and this informant has an overview card of where all of the uh, evidence is uh, on which locations you can find the evidence on which locations you can find the policeman and where you can find the clients at the beginning of the game you are going to pick a card which has the same number and you're going to put it in the, in the same configuration so the same symbol is on the top because then um, both of the both of the teams some of the locations are going to have the same thing like here this uh, piece of evidence can be gathered by the orange team but also by the black team so the team that is gets there the fastest is going to be the team that's going to gather that piece of evidence when you find a piece of evidence you're going to be putting down your evidence token and if there are three you can go to that uh, go to your client to win your round but how are we going to get our team there. We are going to be putting down 10 of these cards which are going to be available to both the informants. I don't know how many I've already put down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we are going to play real time so we are going to give the starting signal and then both of the informants are going to start trying to collect cards that match a location that they want their team to go. If, as an informant, you pick one card, the, your team is only allowed to go to a location that is one away from where they already are. So you have to make sure that you first check which location you want them to go to, and then you're going to take that many cards. You can only go one or two steps. So going to a three location, you first have to make them do two steps and then one step again. So if you give them two cards, they cannot go only one step, they have to do two steps. So in that way, even though there are like 34 locations, there are always only five to six locations that at that moment the team can go to. You are going to do this real time, so both the informants are going to do this at the same time and every time you give new cards to your team, you're going to put down new cards. If you both agree as informants that the cards that you uh, got are not good, you can get rid of all the cards and put 10 new ones down. As soon as your team moves to a new location, you are or you're going to say there's nothing or you are going to be putting down a marker if there's uh, evidence to be found or maybe a police marker just depending on what is on your card that's what you're going to put down and then your team again can get new cards to go to the next location so you cannot give them uh, already multiple sets of stacks of cards so for the next round no you have to wait until they move to a new location and then you're going to be able to give them new cards the game is going to be over if like i said one team gets caught by the police three times or uh, you uh, find three pieces of evidence and all of your evidence like this is on the board and you go to the location where the client is then you win the round and the game is going to be over if one team wins two rounds in shadows amsterdam they went for an anthropomorphic look for the artwork 
and I thought this was pretty clever. Uh, all of the uh, humans are replaced by animals and it's just a fun and uh, unique way of doing the artwork and I really liked it. Something that I already told in the introduction is the fact that they try to uh, make the pictures uh, represent more or depict more than only Amsterdam. So we have pictures of the tulip fields, of fishermen, of uh, the Gouda cheese market, of windmills, which are of course very important in the Netherlands because we are below sea level, so a lot of water has to be pumped away. And King's Day, our national holiday, where we celebrate the birthday of our king. They did not forget, of course, Amsterdam. So we also have like the uh, I am Amsterdam sign right here. Uh, we have the Amsterdam Soccer Stadium. Uh, we have some pictures of the uh, Grachten, which are of course like a little bit like Venice. Uh, the Grachten in Amsterdam. And they even have a picture in the red light district. Luckily it's pretty discreet, but uh, I get why they had to put it in the game because of course all the, uh, when you say Amsterdam, you say the red light district. So they had to put it in the game, but luckily it's pretty discreet put in there. <laughs> The game plays like a combination of codenames and Dixit. You're going to be in two teams with one captain that is going to have an overview tile on which he can see where he needs to lead the team to. You have to uh, gather three pieces of evidence and then go to the client to win the game. The game plays in real time, so both of the teams are simultaneously trying to be the fastest to find those pieces of evidence. Some of those evidences on the card are the same for both teams. So sometimes you really, really want to get to a certain piece of evidence because then the other team cannot uh, gather that evidence anymore. Luckily, some of the evidences are unique for both teams, so it is always possible to get those. Because it is in real time, a lot of pressure is put on those information officers that are going to try to guide their team to the right spots with these Dixit-like cards which depict all of the different artwork. The, both, of the, both of the information officers are going to have 10 of these cards and with them they are going to try to lead their team to the correct locations on the board which are also the same kind uh, of images. Luckily, even though there are like 34 different locations you can lead your team to, um, they uh, added a clever mechanism where if the team only gets one card from their information officer, uh, the, the location is one step away and when they get two cards, the location is two steps away. So uh, in that way, you mostly, instead of having 34 options and locations to go to and figure out which uh, pictures match that location, you have like five or six options which narrows it down a lot and helps uh, make the game more streamlined and it works actually pretty well. On those overview cards there are also policemen and they make the game a little bit harder and depending on what overview cards you're going to pick the higher the number the diff more difficult it's going to get there are more, more police going to be on watch and trying to catch you uh, in the act. As soon as your team uh, picks uh, the wrong uh, location and there's a police uh, officer on that uh, tile, you are going to lose one uh, life. And if that happens three times, you're going to lose the round. Um, and if that happens twice, the other team is going to win. So you can win or by the team, by the other team losing twice or by being the fastest team twice uh, to find the evidence and get to the client. Uh, so there's an extra uh, element of surprise and a little bit of excitement right there with the uh, addition of the policemen that are uh, secretly on the board. Something that I found out during this game that while I really like real-time games, I also really like uh, with uh, team-based guessing games to during the round of the other team to try to guess along um, with their uh, clue that they were given. Because this is in real time, you do not really have time for this. This also gives uh, less downtime, but I really like to guess along. So for me, it was a little bit of a bummer that I could not really do this and just had to focus on my own team because there was no time for to do that. Something that you always want to know in a game like this is if it's going to give enough replayability. Because after a while, you've seen all the cards and then is the game still going to be fun? 
they made sure that this game has a lot of replayability with the different districts. These different districts are double-sided and not every game you're going to use the same ones. So that already gives a lot of replayability. There are a lot of clue cards and Dixit-like cards that are going to be used to uh, guide your team to the correct location. And the overview cards, uh, which are of course all of them are unique with the, the locations that you have to guide your team to are also uh, have uh, three configurations. So even though there are uh, 34 cards, there are actually times three configurations that you can choose and that combined with uh, the different ways you can put down these districts and all the different cards, every game is going to feel unique. And I don't think that after only a few plays, you're going to, um, the game is going to feel samey. This game is of course perfect to play with a large group. Uh, they say it's a maximum of eight, but of course it doesn't really matter how big the team is going to be. Everyone is going to be able to guess along. The only maximum really that there is is how big your room is where you're going to play the game or how many chairs you've got. People can also really easily drop in and drop out. I always really like that about team-based guessing games because uh, that's just a casual way to, to play a game. And it's also perfect to play at a party or at a family gathering or anything like that. The game, which is mostly unique for these team played games, is also playable with two to three players with the help of a special app which has a timer and some other features that are going to help you to play that two to three player game. It's fine to play it that way, but for me personally, I always like the fact that you can play this game with so many, with these kind of games with so many players. So for me, uh, more players is always better, but for those people that sometimes want to play these kind of games with a smaller crowd, this is going to be possible. All in all, I had a lot of fun with Shadows Amsterdam. I did notice for me personally that the real-time aspect was not really up my alley. Uh, I like my uh, team-based guessing games to be a little bit uh, uh, slower. But uh, it was fun though, it gave some excitement, uh, it added some excitement to the game. Um, did the game do anything really new? No, I don't think so. It is just a smart combination of already tried and proven concepts like Dixit and Codenames. And if you like any of those games, I really recommend you trying out Shadows Amsterdam. You're going to have a lot of fun and especially for you Dutchies out there, really try this game out. It really incorporates uh, the Netherlands in an interesting way and you're going to have fun with this team-based guessing game which is Shadows Amsterdam. Mm -hmm.